Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Amir Karam, board certified facial plastic surgeon, founder and creator of Karam MD Skin. I specialize in facial rejuvenation, which basically means I help people look as young as they feel. And on today's episode of Skin School, we're gonna talk about a very important active ingredient that should be a part of your skincare regimen if you're serious about anti-aging. And that is niacinamide. Niacinamide is one of those increasing, you know, we're learning more about it, getting more awareness about it, you're hearing more on social media, etc. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break it down for you, I'm gonna explain why it's so important, why I love it so much, why I've included it into our skincare regimen, which is the trifecta, and ultimately, I'm gonna put it into perspective so you can be empowered and make the right decisions. But also, at the end, I'm gonna talk about who's a candidate for it, who's not a candidate for it, how you should use it, you know, all the kind of basic, basic things that go along with it. But trust me when I say this, watching this entire video, you're gonna be convinced that if you're not already on it, you're gonna to wanna to be on it, and you're gonna, more importantly, understand why it's so important. All right, folks, so, so let's break this down. So what is niacinamide? So niacinamide is vitamin B3. Now there's a number of different B vitamins out there, but vitamin B3 happens to be niacinamide. Niacinamide is the one that has the direct impact on skin. It's a water-soluble vitamin. It's one that has been studied in you know, many different settings and has been shown and proven to have what's really, really important in skincare, and that is a multitasking impact on aging prevention of the skin. And why multitasking is so important? Because when you think about what happens to the skin as it ages, it's not just one thing, it's not just fine lines, it's not just discoloration, it's not just dryness, it's not just pores, it's all of those things and more, right? A lot of different things are happening to the skin as it ages. So when you can find an individual active ingredient that can directly impact maybe all of those things, then you've really come out on top. Why? Because it's much more efficient and it's much more effective. And especially when you combine it with other very effective anti-aging active ingredients, then what you're getting is synergy. And synergy means that one plus one is not two now, it's three or four. And that was really, like I said, at the end of the day, an important concept for us when we developed the trifecta was that we wanted to bank on the synergy aspect of it. And I'm gonna teach you how you can do that and what are the uh, components that you wanna add into your, your basic regimen in addition to niacinamide that you can achieve synergy and make big, big impact on your skin over time. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through all the benefits, and this is just to give you an idea of like, when I say multitasking, what I'm exactly talking about. And I don't wanna you know, bore you with any biochemistry, so I'm just gonna simply say that niacinamide is taken up into the skin. It is then converted into a coenzyme, which is called nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. And when it's transformed into it, that's where all the impact starts happening at the skin. And many things that we have in skincare do, do exactly that. They go in as one thing, then they get converted into something else, and then they start doing all sorts of beautiful and crazy, you know, miraculous biochemical things that will have impact. And that is by definition what an active ingredient does. An active ingredient imparts a true chemical or biochemical change that is beneficial for us at the skin level so that we can see it. But what's happening is it's working at the cell level and that changes everything. I mean, that's the whole story between something that's active versus something that is essentially, you know, just being sort of added for the sake of, it sounds really cool, like, you know, clips of some algae in Western, you know, wherever, and you're like, oh, that sounds amazing, it's super rare, and it costs $300 in a bottle, but what does it actually do? No one really knows. What I'm sharing with you is stuff that we know does something real at the biochemical level. All right, so what are those changes? So number one is hydration. Now, remember hydration, I mean, it sounds this whole thing, I mean, the body we need to hydrate, we drink a lot of water, et cetera, but what's happening at the cell level? Now, hydration basically comes down to this. Take a vegetable, for example. So when you have a vegetable, like a carrot, and you leave it out for a day or two, it starts to get flimsy, right? The flimsiness of that is because it has become dehydrated. The water has left the cell membrane and the turgor in the carrot is lost. Now you stick that same carrot in some water, you know, half an hour later, the thing is crispy again. That's because it's taken water in. The cells in our skin, as we age, begin to lose the function 
towards dehydration, meaning that it loses more water than it is able to retain. And one of the things that happens is that it, the skin becomes more sallow and becomes more deflated. And when skin has the opposite effect, when it's youthful, it's supple, it's, it's firm, right? So that's a big function of hydration. Now when you get a little bit more granular, the, what's happening at the cell level is cells are surrounded by a lipid bilayer, which is basically two fatty acids that are protecting and creating the cell. So inside of the cell is all the good stuff and outside of the cell is the stuff that you know either wants to get into the cell or that we want to get out of the cell. And what we want in, the, in this case is we want a lipid bilayer and this, by the way, is the skin barrier function that you keep hearing about and you've heard many times. And what is happening is you want a skin barrier to function by allowing the retention of water and prevention of things like pollutants and irritants from getting into the cell, right? So you wanna keep the bad stuff out and you want to be able to bring in water and keep water in and retain it. That's a very important function of a, skin, of a healthy skin barrier. Now, what niacinamide is doing is it's enhancing and optimizing that, which is really, really important. So the skin becomes more supple, more hydrated, and you keep the bad stuff like the irritants and pollutants out, which can cause the skin to become more sensitive. It can cause all sorts of havoc internally to the cells, etc. So that's a key, key piece of the, the hydration store. And I hope that made some sense for you so now you kind of understand how this is all sort of working out. Number two, it's calming redness. Now redness is caused by irritation and inflammation. Why is that bad? Well, because if the skin is inflamed or irritated, you know it's swollen. And swelling at the microscopic level means that, first of all, anything you put on the skin is unlikely to get through the skin. Number two, the skin is gonna appear red, you know, which is not a great complexion to have. It looks irritated and, and inflamed but also the pores on the surface of the skin, if they're swollen, the pores get blocked. And as a result, the oils that are trying to leave the gland and go through the, the duct and get expressed onto the surface of the skin get blocked up. And as a result, they get dilated. And dilated pores are what you see on the surface as what people call pores. Like, oh, that person has large pores. The pores have gotten larger because they've gotten dilated as a result of blockage. So all of this together creates, you know, changes that are consistent with acne, even rosacea, and even eczema can be exacerbated by this phenomenon, this effect. And niacinamide can reduce all of that and calm the skin. And that's a really, really important thing. Also, if you're somebody who uses retinol, for example, or uses glycolic acids, et cetera, and your skin gets a little irritated, well, the presence of niacinamide in your skincare routine can calm the skin and help you tolerate those things even better. Number three, back to pores. Now, we just mentioned the inflammatory impact on pores, but what about the oil production? Well, oil production, the more oil is secreted by the glands, the more likely it is to clog up and dilate. Well, one of the things that niacinamide is really good at is decreasing the production of oil. So if you have oily skin, you have prone to, to cloggage and acne and things like that, by reducing the production of oil, you're going to be able to manage your pore size, acne, as well as just all around um, oil condition of the skin. So you, if you have oily skin, you'll kind of dry, dry your skin a little bit more in terms of its um, balance, which is probably favorable for a lot of different reasons. Next is pigmentation. So I've made several videos talking about melasma and you know how pigments and all that stuff are impacted, but here's the story. So a melanocyte is a cell that produces pigment. It produces a pigment called melanin. Melanin is created by the melanocyte, expressed through the melanocyte's skin barrier, and into the skin and it kind of migrates all the way up to the surface of the skin where eventually you see it as a pigmentation plaque. And if they start to form together, you form a larger sunspot. Melasma is caused by the same sort of uh, mechanism. So what vitamin B3, in this case niacinamide, is doing is it's working at the melanocyte level by suppressing, through multiple different pathways, suppressing the production of the melanin molecule, which is wonderful. If you can decrease the production of pigment, therefore you're gonna get less pigment production. In addition, it also works on breaking up the pigment that's already made it to the surface. So it's kind of like you know, hitting it on both, both levels, which is excellent. That's how you want to manage the issue. So the net effect is the skin's going to be more even toned. It's going to be less likely to have uh, sunspots and, and all these different things. And it's synergistic, and I'll explain why, because vitamin C and retinol work in the same sort of way. So now you're, you're 
bringing in multiple different um, actives that are doing essentially the same thing. So you're really recruiting your, your forces to be able to really even the tone and brighten and create a more even, beautiful, youthful looking skin surface. Next is fine lines and wrinkles. Now, does fine lines and wrinkles improve because you've improved the hydration function of the skin and the skin barrier function? Possibly. There's also some, um, some studies that show that because of the antioxidant impact of niacinamide, you're decreasing the sun damage and the acceleration of loss of collagen that happens through that mechanism. It's been shown to increase some keratin, possibly some collagen. You've got all these different things that are working to overall improve uh, the presence of fine lines and wrinkles. Another huge win because that is a big part of people's misery when it comes to the aging process. And supple skin, decreased fine lines, more bright, all excellent components of, of anti-aging. Now the final, final one might be a little bit of a bonus. We're still in the early stages of figuring out whether this has you know, a real meaningful impact or not, but there's been some early suggestions and studies that nicotinamide can impact the pre-cancer, cancer evolution. So if that's the case, well then you got this bonus benefit of anti-aging and decreasing um, you know, the likelihood of cancer. How much of that makes a difference? What's, what does it take to, to do that? I'm not 100% sure. I don't think the studies are clear on that yet, but that's just something to know and to keep in mind that you might be getting some anti-cancer benefits in addition to all the other ones that we're talking about here. All right, so let's uh, talk about who's a candidate, who's not. Basically, it comes down to this. Any skin type, whether you're oily, dry, you know, younger, older, lighter, darker, doesn't make a difference, you will benefit from niacinamide. So it's one for all, doesn't make a difference. Like there's no contradiction on that aspect. How should you use it? Typically it's used morning and evening, and like anything else, you wanna use it consistently, use it regularly. All these changes that we're talking about are gonna be impacted best when you're doing it consistently, month over month, year after year, you're gonna get all these changes to continuously improve the quality and condition of the skin over time. Starting and stopping, one of the worst things you can do, and it's no different for niacinamide. So once you discover it, you decide you wanna get on it, stick, stay on it and stay on it for good. Like always, Anytime you're gonna be on an active uh, skincare ingredient means that you're taking your skin seriously, it means that you're taking the big guns out and you're gonna actually do something really meaningful to your skin. So do not forget about sunscreen. Make sure that sunscreen is a part of your routine because you're taking all these steps forward, but you're taking more steps backwards when you're not using a sunscreen in addition. So a good broad spectrum sunscreen. I've done lots of videos on, on the importance of sun protection in, in the overall process. Make sure you're using daily broad spectrum mineral-based sunscreen in addition to anything you do actively. And I alluded to this earlier, but you want to combine this with other excellent actives. And some of the big ones are vitamin C, retinol, you know, growth factors are really key and important as well as peptides and, and all these other ones. So I actually have a whole video set up for the key components in a optimal skincare routine. But suffice it to say, I personally took all of this into major consideration, as I mentioned earlier, when I developed the trifecta, specifically Illuminate, and brought all of these aspects into one. Because why that's important is because, again, synergy is king. You really get more out of things when they're done in combination. Number two, it's easier to stay consistent with something that is literally just one or two or three steps. And that's what the trifecta is for those of you who don't know. It's like one, two, three steps. You get all these different components included in there. But ultimately, like I said, sun protection, consistency, picking the right things to be a part of your regimen and using it from now and forever, you will definitely see changes that are happening in your skin. So this is why niacinamide is one of our hero ingredients that I wanna highlight and I wanna make sure you know about it, you can benefit from it. Share this with some friends and family who have uh, you know, um, some interest in, and wanna be informed on what they can do to actively take care of their skin. And hopefully this gives you some perspective on the particular ingredients that you may already be using on your skin or that you may, you know, as a result of this video, want to explore. If you haven't already and um, you like this type of content, make sure you subscribe to this channel and uh, any questions you have, drop them in the comments below. Sign up for the Karam MD Journal, which is a written blog that comes to your email and 
has all sorts of very important things that I think will, will help educate you and empower you to make excellent choices along the way. All right, folks, that was a real pleasure of mine. Niacinamide is our hero for, for this video. Um, more videos to come on different aspects of skin anti-aging as well as everything else related to facial rejuvenation. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much, Dr. Amir Karam.